Welcome to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Eric and Rob. All right. Here we are, NXT TakeOver Weekend in your house, 2021. Your host, The Real Big E, alongside Rob the Ambassador. How's it going? It is going good, sir. Good on the Saturday night. It's hot here in Des Moines. Man, who you telling, man? It is steaming out here. I, I tried to pull out. We had a inflatable pool at our old house, and I tried to pull it out for my steps on the day, but then I saw it a big ass hole in it. So I was like, ah, oh, well, this ain't no good. <laughs> Toss that. Uh, so I guess, you know, maybe tomorrow, maybe, er, no, I don't know. I have to go. P- it's tomorrow's going to be tricky because this show, I have to drive two hours to go pick up a dog and then drive two hours back. So that's at one. I got to be there about one o'clock and two hours back. So that's three. I should be, I should be good for the show. I should be all right. The show's not till six, so should be fine. Six or seven, I don't know. They do. They're probably gonna have a pre-show at six, I would guess. Showtime at seven. By that time, you know the dog should be somewhat settled in. If nothing else, I put him in a crate. So, <laughs> so you get new <laughs> new dog. New dog, man. First uh, family dog in the house. Hey man, that's nice. You know, I, I, you know, I got my little dog. He ain't here right now, but uh, yeah, man, it's nice having a dog. Kids will, kids will love that. Yeah, I just don't want them to drive me crazy with that thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, but it is what it is. So, did you catch NXT this past week? Yes. I thought it was a decent show. Um, I didn't really I, – I don't like when they try to promote the the multi-man or woman matches because it's always a cluster. It's always somebody's got to come out and talk, and then somebody else has to talk. And then, oh, look, it broke down to a brawl. Who saw that coming? Oh, Adam Cole's on the screen. Oh, all of a sudden he's in the ring, getting, kicking carry across in the back of the head. Who saw that coming? Only everybody that's ever watched wrestling, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> is what it is so yeah it, it's an old formula but i guess they think it still works i guess they do because they just keep doing it so whatever um so let me pull up the card here all right <laughs> before you get to that mess so i'll, I'll start off start a little low on the card here. Got Mercedes Martinez taking on Zia Lee. And this feud kind of came out of nowhere. But uh, I like Mercedes getting I, – I, I just like both of them getting a chance on the card. Um, I don't know how it's going to go because I think – but well, Mercedes has the veteran experience. And Zia Lee, I just hadn't seen enough of her. So I'm very curious how this is gonna go. Um, hmm, it's kind of a tough choice too. I guess I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Mercedes Martinez wins by disqualification. I think Bo is gonna get involved, and that's gonna cost Zaylee the match. So there's not gonna be a clean finish, but Mercedes will get the win. What I'll say. Wow, that's an interesting call. I like both of these ladies. I've been a fan of Zia Lee, but I was not a fan of her previous gimmick. And I'm not sure about the new character that they have her portraying now. Although I like it better than what they were doing before. I'm just not sure that it's working. But I'm going to say that Zia Lee will win because I think she needs a big win if, if they want this character to, to get over. Um... And and a win over Mercedes Martinez would get her into the upper echelon of the women's division. So I'm going to say Zia Lee 
wins. Okay. All right. Um, Bronson Reed and MSK tagging up with Legato del Fantasma. Winner take all. So we're talking the NXT Tag Team Championship and the North American Championship. As much as I like Legato, and I think they're legit, they got a good look. I like the suits, I like the interest music. I think Joaquin Wilde and uh, Raul Mendoza. Yeah, I like them. But Bronson Reed just won the North American Championship, and I think they're going to let MSK run with the tag titles for a while, probably until they run into the Grizzle Young Veterans. So I'm definitely going to say Reed and MSK pick up the win and what could be a show stealer. Man, I agree with you about this being the possible show stealer. These six are going to put on a show, I think. But I agree with you. I think that Bronson Reed and MSK are going to retain. I enjoy all three of those guys. I know a lot of people – I don't think a lot of people like Bronson Reed. He's not your ideal – <laughs> oh, you don't like Bronson Reed? No. Oh, come on. Not at man, all. That, that big <laughs> man can work. I like Bronson Reed. He's a big man, but he can go. And mm-hmm. I like him. And that, I definitely like him. for me. Okay. I, I like him. And I definitely enjoy MSK. So I, I'm going to say all three of them continue their runs. MSK are good workers. I wish they changed their look. They look like teenagers and the highlighted green colors. I don't care for that, but they work in the ring, so I forgive all that. Bronson Reed, I don't know. Is it the physique or lack no, thereof? No, it's definitely a lack thereof, but no, that's not it because Keith Lee doesn't really have a physique either. And I, I, mean, uh, I don't know. It's something about him. I just, I'm not feeling it. I don't like the singlet. I know, definitely know that's it. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Well, what would you rather have dude wear? I don't know. You don't want him to just go with trunks, do you? I, I really don't know. It's hard to put a finger on what it is. I don't like his promos. I will tell you. I will say that. Um, they kind of made it easy for him this past week with just him throwing to the video. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's just – I just – he, I don't know. That belt doesn't look good on him. It just doesn't. <laughs> Man, I enjoy the big guy. I like Bronson Reed. He, he kind of, he's kind of to me like Bam Bam Bigelow. Didn't have the greatest physique, but agile and could move. That, that's kind of who he reminds me of. But he was such a good heel too. Like this guy, I, maybe that's it. Maybe I just don't care about his character because he's just so vanilla. Okay. All right. Maybe that's it. Uh, all right. This is a big one, and I'm sure our special guest will be very interested to tune in to see this one. The, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm curious, is this going to be an actual championship, or is this, is this going to be like, uh, what is it, Taz's belt, the FTW belt? Is this going to be an actual championship now? So I'm curious, because they got so much talent in NXT. Maybe they need more than one mid-card title. Maybe that could be what it is. So, you've had this feud with, L- oh, excuse me, L.A. Knight. Yeah, do and, it right now. Do it right. And <laughs> Kevin Grimes. <laughs> uh, and Ted DiBiase, Hall of Famer. And I didn't know what could possibly be in their briefcase. I'm thinking, oh, it must be a bunch of money. Maybe, I mean, but that didn't make sense either because the whole thing was both these guys have money. Okay, what could it be? And, I, and then I got to thinking, and I was like, well, damn, I hope they don't do this because Rob's going to hate this, I can tell. I was hoping they're not going to do, like, an NXT money in the bank type deal where now NXT is doing it too. I was like, well, that's, that's – not that that would be awful, but I don't – I don't know. I don't like that either. But when they opened that briefcase and it was that championship, oh, man. 
Oh, man. So uh, this is definitely going to be interesting to see. Uh, this is tough. I don't know much about L.A. Knight, but I do like the gimmick. I actually do. Um, and everybody knows. <laughs> Cameron Graves then grew on me. <laughs> you know? I, I did not see that coming. Going to the moon. I'm going to give it to Grimes. I, I just, I can't see in, it's going any other way. I got to give it to him. He's going to the moon, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, this might surprise you. I actually enjoy what they're doing here with the million dollar belt. I'm, I'm actually excited about this match. But I'm going to go with L.A. Knight. And it's only because, and I don't know, look, I'm, I'm a little older, so I go back a ways. I remember Ted DiBiase's run as the Million Dollar Champion. Typically, that was heel stuff. That's heel shit, as we say on this show, heel shit. With mm -hmm. that in mind, I'm going to say that, uh, let me see if I can do it right. Let me see. L.A. Knight, I'm not sure how that looks on the video, but yeah, I'm going to say that he wins it because in the past, Million Dollar Man, Million Dollar Belt, it was all heel shit. Maybe they change it up, but I'm going to say they stick with tradition. And I think L.A. Knight needs it more than Cameron Grimes. I think, look, you hated Cameron Grimes in the beginning, but now you like him. <laughs> he's over. He's over with the crowd. Yeah. He's a face. So he doesn't really need it as much as L.A. Knight. So I'm going to say that Knight gets it. I'm not going to be mad at either person winning. Uh, so it'll definitely be interesting to see. And the fact that it's a ladder match just raised the bar. So, again, now I'm more intrigued. Same here. Okay. The Women's NXT Championship. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez with Dakota Kai versus Emma Moon with Shotzi Blackheart. This isn't really tough, in my opinion, as much as – and I know you're an Ember Moon fan, too. Uh, I mean, more so than anybody on the podcast, really. Uh, had a chance to meet Ember Moon. So, oh, yeah. um, I, I think this will be a, a lights-out match. I think Ember's, Ember's going to be the reason why. Um, not that I don't I – like, I like Raquel, too. But when you're the, the big so – I'm, I'm so used to saying the big guy. When you're the – the big woman <laughs> in the in the match, you are limited because of your size. And that's just the reality of it. But she does a good job. I mean, she wrestled Io Shirai, and that was a great match. So it's going to be up to Ember to carry the match, and she will. She will do a good job. But I don't see her becoming NXT champion just yet. I, I, I don't. I think there's a different trajectory for that to happen. But... It'll be a good match. It'll be a good match. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sticking with Raquel. Raquel probably gonna, is going to retain. Um, it's just too soon. Yeah, well, like you said, love me some Ember. Got to meet Ember. She was as nice as she could be. I was wearing this T-shirt, which I am going to be wearing tomorrow night. <laughs> I'm in Ember's corner. But with all that said... Raquel Gonzalez is going to retain in what I think will be a great match, but Raquel is the right woman at the right time to, to be the leader of this women's division, which I think is the best women's division in all of wrestling right now. And mm -hmm. so she will retain. Oh yeah. Hands down the best. And last but not least, it's the NXT championship. Pete Dunn. Uh, versus Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly versus Karrion Cross, Fatal Five Way. I like the character. I mean, I like the players in the match. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be great. There's no question there. It's 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 got everything you need, but it's also got the man, the man with the plan, and that plan is Scarlet. Okay, let me tell y'all something. Karen Cross ain't dropping this belt no time soon. 
I don't care what y'all put in front of them. There's nothing going on in NXT right now. Nobody that's ready. Not to steal Oscar's phrase, but they're not ready for carrying cross. Period. He's going to win. They tried to beat this man up. They tried to take his title. The only reason I could see him losing is if he's going to be on the main roster, which with all the firings lately, that could be a possibility. But no doubt, no 1,000% Karen Cross is going to retain. No doubt in my mind. I'm just looking forward to it being an entertaining match. That's it. Well, I'm going to agree here. I'm not nearly as big a fan of Cross as you are. I don't know what it is. There's some sort of disconnect between him and me. I, I They're bidding him up as this undefeated, indestructible force, and I just I, I don't buy it yet. I'm not saying dude don't have the tools and the look. He, he, he does, but I don't know what it is that I'm not seeing that everybody else is seeing. Still, with that said, obviously you can see what they're trying to do with him. I do think he retains... To me, the only legitimate threat to his reign is when he goes one-on-one with Adam Cole. But even when that happens, I'm not sure that that Cole gets over. Uh, But Cross is going to retain, and I think he's probably going to be champ for a while. I have so many problems with Karrion Cross versus Adam Cole. But I'm going to start with the most glaring one is the size difference. I'm sorry. He's humongous and Adam Cole is tiny I'm bigger than Adam Cole that I know it doesn't matter in wrestling but yeah I can't suspend my disbelief that much okay that's like Adam Cole wrestling Big Show and he knocks out Big Show now obviously Big Show wasn't booked the best but that's the I'm just saying you and I saw Floyd Mayweather yeah. knock out Big Show in person well, that's different <laughs> <laughs> it's a celebrity. <laughs> it just, but the optics, man, come on. Look at little ass Adam Cole, barely six feet tall, barely 200 pounds. And Karen Cross is gigantic, and he's skills. legit jujitsu. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that when it happens, because it is going to happen. I'm not saying that Cole gets over, but to me, that's the only legitimate threat to. Man, that's a squash. Uh, cross. I will buy Kyle O'Reilly beating him before I buy Adam Cole. Mm, no, not not me, not me personally. I like I like uh, O'Reilly too. I like O'Reilly, but Adam Cole, man, is just an incredibly gifted wrestler. And like I said, he, you know, skill wise, if you're just looking at it from a skill, it's Shawn Michaels. People complain about him being small, and look, he did lose to Taker twice. But and, Shawn and was lost. never Shawn was never that small. Sean was lean and, and jacked, at least. He's not even jacked. He just looks a regular-ass dude that wrestles. He has no definition, nothing. Nothing about him says I'm an athlete, nothing. Except for all of the athleticism he displays in the ring. Oh, yeah, but, 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 but okay, we're just walking to the ring. If you're watching, if you're a casual fan, you're just watching this guy walk to the ring. Other than being charismatic, he's like, he doesn't look like anything. Versus literally everybody else in the field. Look at Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn's not not a big guy either, but he's he, he's gotten in shape. He's ripped to the bone now. So at least I say, okay, well, yeah, he looks like he'd be a, a threat. See, and, and for me, Cole, even though he's not ripped, I guess I just don't think he has to be because the dude is so, like I said, athletically gifted in the ring. Like I said, I, I believe skills – overcome size but look that's what will make it an intriguing matchup i see your point typically a good big man beats a good little man no matter what sport you're talking about so i do see your point but to me that's still a very intriguing matchup but like i said i i don't see cole winning it when it does happen but i think it'll be a good match yeah uh, i mean don't get me wrong i mean i'm sound like i hate adam cole i really don't i mean i gave him uh, wrestler of the year once when we did our best of the year. So it's not like I don't oh, like it. I just, okay. it's just the matchup. That's all. Because when you look at his opponents during that year, it, who was it? It was Gargano. It was Ciampa. You know, people his size. So, yeah. Like I was, said, it was, the biggest person he wrestled was Velveteen Dream. 
And he's not even a big, he's just taller, but he's not big. Yeah, see, you and I feel differently about Cross. I, I'm not, this character they're trying to create for him, I'm not buying it. He just doesn't strike me that way. I mean, he's he's in good shape, but he's not ripped. He, he is muscular. But the character, this un, this unstoppable force, a guy who can beat Champa is convenient. I, I'm not buying it. it I, I don't know what it is. I just, I'm, I'm not feeling carrying cross. I'm, I'm not feeling him being this indestructible force. I'm not. It's to me, it's the, it's the whole package. He has the gimmick and half the time he doesn't even have to come out there because he just sends his woman to do it. And I guess I just love the fact that um, Austin Theory, you know, I mean, kind of being a young, dumb idiot, just didn't know what he was doing. Mess said something to Scarlett. She didn't like it. Told Carrie, <laughs> here, put them hands on him. Like, that's, what, that's what's supposed to happen. Right, right. So That's his I, woman. I, yeah, that's what you I just feel to. like they've told that story so well. She handles the business, and he just shows up and whoops that ass. Now, lately, they've been having him cut more promos, which is fine. Um, But I don't know. I guess we'll see. We agree that he's going to win the match. Uh, I just would rather Cole. I, I, and here's the, here's my last point I'll make about Adam Cole. And I can make this point about Johnny too, Johnny Gargano. They've been in NXT how long now? Four or five years? Haven't been called up? What's Vince going to do with them? Well, that's hard. Now, look, man, based on what we've seen Vince do, that that is the million-dollar question. But both of those guys are very talented. And Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. my question about talent. But Alistair Black was talented. Andrade was talented. You could argue Braun Strowman was talented. I mean, and they all gone. I mean, that's a very fair point. How can I possibly argue? But what I will say is that when you have guys talented like that, you at least have to see what you can do with them on the main. Look, Cole, you can – look, I'll admit that, that Cross is the man right now, but if you bring Cole to the main roster, you are, he's already got a built-in audience – uh, with, well, we thought that about Bobby Roode. I didn't. Not I didn't with Roode. I mean, not like with Cole. To me, it's different. Okay. But but look, you're right. Booking is important, and how they book Cole is is going to be key to to his success. No matter how talented you are, look, Ricochet. We all know is talented, even though I don't think his promos are that great. And look what they've done with him. You mentioned. Strowman and and Alistair Black and Andrade, all great talents and and all gone. So yeah, I, I see your point, and I do worry what they do with Cole. But what I'm saying is that with all of the talent he has, eventually they're going to take bring him to the main roster. It's just a matter of what they do with him once he gets there. I don't have a good uh, <laughs> I don't have a good feeling about it. I tell you that much. You and me both. So, all right. Well, guess we'll see what happens tomorrow night. Uh, I've heard some rumors. As you know, NXT, these takeovers, even, sometimes when the card isn't loaded, there's other things that make it a good card, like surprises, returns. You never know. You just never know. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow night. Um, probably the... Audio and the video won't be posted until late or the next day because of just I have to edit these things. So uh, make sure you go back and check out our previous videos and podcasts on. Uh, you can listen to our audio on Google, Apple, Spotify, Podbean. You can listen. You can if you. I don't know why you would, but if you would prefer to listen on youtube versus watch you can do that too but you can watch us on youtube check us out on instagram facebook twitter we uh i've been tweeting along with the shows late more, more so lately and every 
uh, pay-per-view, there was a poll we put up. So you guys can vote on your predictions. Do you agree with our predictions? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Um, Ambassador, you got anything? Hey, always want to thank the listeners. We appreciate y'all. Let's hear from you. And I'm going to hammer this point home. Please, please get vaccinated. Get both shots. Get both shots. I've been able to go out of my home. I've been able to go without my mask. I've been able to go into the store. I feel comfortable. It's a great feeling to get back to normalcy. Please, please get your vaccinations. Yes. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, you know, I, I must have had it at some point. Because every for a while, I'll wake up every every so often, I would get these headaches. And my sinuses would be just the pressure. And it would be unbearable at times. Since I've gotten vaccinated, I haven't had that one single time. Yeah, I've told my wife that I am convinced that most, if not all people, have either had it or if they're not vaccinated, will get it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was exposed. Uh, I know for sure that my father had it and, and I was in close contact with him. At the time, I wasn't able to get tested because I, I didn't meet the qualifications, even though I had been possibly exposed. They later they later uh, loosened the restrictions and made it possible for anybody to get tested. I was tested three times, all negative, but I'm convinced that I may have had it at some point as well. Yeah, I think we all did. You know, it's just one of those things. But, again, glad to be vaccinated. Hope people are still going to get it done so we can get back to normalcy, like you said. Thank you all for watching, listening. We appreciate you. We love you. And we'll speak to you all again tomorrow.